Hi, this is Eric from DevOpsTechBlog.com. In this demo, we're going to be creating a highly available and fault tolerant infrastructure on AWS. And we're going to be using the Elastic Load Balancing Service as well as the Auto Scaling Group Service. Right now, I'm in my AWS Management Console. So under Find Services, the first thing we'll need to do is create a VPC. So once you click on VPC, we can see that under the VPC dashboard, we don't have any resources yet. So I'm gonna click on VPCs and we're gonna create one of those and we're gonna call it VPC1 and we're gonna give it a CIDR block of 192.168.1.0 or 0.0 slash 16 and click on create. Okay, our VPC is created. Next, we have to create some subnets. So on the left, I'm gonna click on subnets and click on create. And we'll call it subnet one and make sure we use the VPC that we created. And very important, make sure we use uh, specific availability zones. So the first subnet, we're gonna use 1A and that's in the North Virginia region. And we'll give it a CIDR block of 1.0 slash 24 192.168.1.0 slash 24 and click create okay our first subnet is created and under availability zones we have the us east 1a so we'll create another subnet and we'll call it subnet 2 and that's going to be under the same vpc and we'll use US East 1B and we'll give it a different CIDR block. So this will be 2.0 slash 24. Okay, now we have our two subnets cre created and the importance of that is that we'll need two different availability zones to make sure that our infrastructure is highly available. So if one availability so if one availability zone is down, we'll have another one to make it highly available. And once we have that done, we could see on our VPC dashboards, we have our VPC, our two subnets, a route table was automatically created. Next, we have to create an internet gateway. So I'm gonna click on internet gateways, create. I'm just gonna call it IG1. And this will allow us to create a, and this will allow us to have internet traffic directed towards our elastic load balancer. So right now the state is detached. So I'm gonna click on actions and attach it to VPC. And we're gonna select our VPC one and click attach. Okay, so now we have most of our necessary network resources created. The next thing I'm going to do is right click on services and open in a new tab. And I'm going to go to services and under compute, I'm going to click on EC2. Right now we don't have any running instances. Next we'll create an auto scaling group. So under EC2 towards the bottom on the left, we have a section called auto scaling. And under that, we have the option of launch configurations. So I'm gonna click on that and we'll create launch configuration. And I'm gonna use this Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 image. So I'll select that and use the T2 micro free tier eligible with next under and advanced gonna... details. We have the option to enter user data. So I'm gonna enter a little script I script I created. So go ahead and copy this script into your user data section. And what this is going to do is it's going to install Nginx and start the service for us. And configure security group. So we'll create a new security group. Uh, we'll call it SG1. And let's go ahead and add a rule for HTTP traffic and click on review and create launch configuration. Um, here we have to create a new key pair. 
So I'll call it KP123 and download it. Make sure we save it in a safe place and click on create launch configuration. Okay, once our launch configuration is created, we'll have to create an auto scaling group. But before we create our auto scaling group, we'll have to create a elastic load balancer because we have to specify we want to use our elastic load balancer as a target for our auto scaling group. So back here on this screen, under load balancing, we'll click on load balancers. And let's go ahead and click on create load balancer. For this demo, we use an application load balancer. Since this is a elastic load balancer for Nginx, we'll need to balance, balance HTTP traffic. But there's also other options such as a network load balancer for networking, which is for ultra high performance and you could balance traffic based on IP address. And there's also the classic load balancer, which is not used too much anymore. So let's go ahead and click on create under application load balancer. And I'm going to name it ELB1 and make sure it's internet facing and make sure that we have HTTP under listeners on port 80 and under availability zones, make sure our VPC is selected and in order to make it highly available, make sure we click both of our subnets with our two availability zones and click on next. On this screen, it's asking us to improve our security. So in a production environment, you might want to use HTTPS, which requires a SSL certificate. Uh, for this demo, we're just going to be using HTTP. So we'll click on next and we'll click, a, click on create a new security group. And I'm going to call it SG2. And here under port range, it also it already has port 80 specified. I'm just going to change the type to HTTP and the source is from anywhere and click on next. Here we'll create a new target group. So I'll name it TG1 and the target type is instance and protocol is HTTP on port 80. Under health checks, uh, it's going to check the availability based on HTTP protocol and it's going to check the root path. Okay, so we're going to click on next to register our targets. So we don't have any instances yet, so I'm going to click on next and we'll click create. Okay, so our load balancer was created. Okay, so we have ELB1 and I'm going to go back to auto scaling groups. And we're going to create auto scaling group. And here is our LC1 that we created earlier. So I'm going to click on that and click next. So let's call it auto scaling group one. The launch configuration is LC1. Let's start with two instances and we'll choose our VPC1 network and our two subnets that we created. And under advanced details, we have the option of load balancing. So receive traffic from one or more load balancers. I'm going to click on that. And under target groups, I'm going to click the target group that we created earlier, TG1. And the health check types is, let's change that to ELB. And the rest of the settings look OK and click on next. So we have the option to keep this group at its initial size or use auto scaling policies to adjust the capacity of this group. Um, let's go ahead and keep this group at its initial size. 
So that way, if there are any EC2 instances that are not available, it will just create them so that our two instances are always available and that'll be done automatically. So I'm going to click on next. We could also add a notification, for example, the simple notification service. If there's any event that happens, it will send a notification to an email that we specify. Uh, for this demo, we'll just click on next and review and click on create auto scaling group. Okay, so our auto scaling group is successfully created. Okay. So under activity history, our EC2 instances are not yet in service. So I'm gonna go back to the EC2 dashboard and click on running instances. So here I have the two instances that are automatically being created because of our auto scaling group. So it, it kind of saw that there was no instances running. So we specified we always want two instances to be running at a time. So that's what it's doing here. We have this first one which is running and one that's pending. So those two are being created. So I just refreshed and now they're both running. Okay, next we also have to register our targets. So under load balancing target groups, um, we have our target group that we created but we didn't specify any targets yet. So click on TG1 and register targets. Now that we have our instances created, I'm just gonna click on these and include as pending below and click register pending. So we should have our registered targets and the status is healthy. Okay, next what we want to do is add some elastic IP addresses to our instances because I want to make some changes to the Nginx index file, the index.html file. That way when we go to our browser and check through the Elastic Load Balancer, we'll be able to see which instances are, are, which instances are being redirected to. So under EC2, uh, there's a section network and security, and under that is elastic IPs. So I'm gonna click on elastic IPs, and we're going to allocate elastic IPs, and click on allocate. So we have one here, and I want to associate it with an EC2 instance. So I'm gonna choose the first one here. This one ends in the letter C, and click associate. Next, I want to allocate another one and associate that one to our other instance. Okay, so each of our instances should have an elastic IP. Okay, so I'm going to be using an Ubuntu machine to connect to our instances. Um, if I click on connect, uh, we have to make sure we change the permissions so you can copy that and on, in your shell you can go ahead and paste it. So chmod 400kp123.pem Okay, so once it has the proper permissions we can use the example here, copy and paste that to connect to our instance. Actually, we have to create a route for our internet gateway. So under VPC, if we click on internet gateways, 
Um, you can see we have our internet gateway under route table. If we go to routes at the bottom and click on edit routes, let's go ahead and add a route. And it's all zeros, just like that. And choose our internet gateway and click on save routes. Okay, that's very important. And let's try that again. Okay, type in yes. Okay, so we're in our first instance and let's make sure that Nginx is installed. So let's do system CTL status Nginx. Okay, should be enabled and running. Okay, if it's not, just go ahead and do a sudo yum install dash y nginx. Okay, and then a system ctl start nginx and enable system ctl start nginx and enable nginx okay and the next thing i want to do is make a change to this instance's index file so we're going to go into the directory by doing a cd forward slash user share nginx html if we do an ls we can see we have an index file okay so we're going to do a sudo vi index.html and i'm just going to delete everything that's in there and i'm going to create a header And I'm going to put this is server one. Okay, just like that and save it. Okay, so I'm going to exit. Actually, I'm going to restart the Nginx service. So sudo system CTL restart Nginx. Okay, and then I'm going to exit out of this instance. And I'm back on my Ubuntu machine. Now on the other instance, I'm going to go to connect. So this is my other instance, connect. We already changed the permissions on the key. So I'm just going to copy this example. And on our Ubuntu shell, I'm going to paste it in there. And once we're in our instance, we can check to make sure that Nginx is also running on this instance. So sudo systemctl status Nginx. Okay, should be active, running, and enabled. And now I want to go into that directory again. So user share Nginx HTML. And the sudo vi the index.html file. I'm just going to delete everything again. Okay. Insert mode and we'll create a header. And for this instance, we're going to put this is server 2. Okay, and we're going to save that and we will do a sudo system ctl reload nginx and exit okay once that's done we can go to our elastic load balancer and we will take this DNS name and copy that. 
And copy that and go to our ELB. And right now it's showing us that this is server two. If I refresh it, it should change to server one. And if I refresh it again, it'll keep changing. And that's how we know that our elastic load balancer is working. And that's pretty much it for creating an elastic load balancer and an auto scaling group, very highly available and fault tolerant. Thank you for watching.